2023 is almost over. And now is the time of year that some of you will be looking to buy a drawing tablet for yourself or as a gift for someone else. And I may be able to help. It can be difficult to choose a drawing tablet because in the last three years alone, over 53 new drawing tablets have been released. And it has always been hard to separate marketing messaging from reality. So I put together a drawing tablet buying guide and some related documents that will steer you through the process. This video is one of several upcoming videos where I'm going to give you a highlight tour of the topics in that buying guide. You can find the buying guide at this link, which is available in the description below and in the comments. Let's begin with the basics. Electromagnetic resonance, or EMR, is the fundamental digital pen technology that drawing tablets are built upon. And Wacom pioneered the use of EMR for drawing tablets. EMR is known to deliver a really great drawing experience. Modern EMR pens don't even need a battery. They get power just by being nearby to the tablet. And unlike Bluetooth pens, EMR pens do not need to be paired with either the tablet or the computer. You just bring a pen close to the tablet, and as long as the pen and tablet are compatible, the pen will start working. The topic of batteries inside pens brings me to my first big tip for you. Some older tablets use an older EMR design, where those pens do have a battery inside. Sometimes the battery is replaceable and sometimes it is rechargeable. In any case, I recommend that you do not buy any tablet that has one of these older EMR pens. When you are shopping for a tablet and you see any phrases like active EMR or rechargeable pen, pen charging cable or battery powered pen, these statements clearly indicate that it is one of these older EMR pen designs. Modern EMR pens and tablets will just be called EMR or sometimes you'll see them stated as passive EMR or battery free EMR. And to be clear, I am not saying these older pens don't work well. It's just that the fact that they're using a battery indicates the tablet is an older design. And newer drawing tablets with their newer pens have really improved so much since those older designs. There are three kinds of drawing tablets and I'll go through each one. Pen tablets are often called screenless tablets because they do not have a screen, an embedded display panel. A pen tablet is just a plastic shell that wraps the EMR sensor. Pen tablets must always be connected to a computer. All pen tablets support connecting to a computer with a USB cable. Usually that will be a USB-C cable. But some pen tablets can also be connected wirelessly via Bluetooth. Pen tablets are the least expensive and the most reliable drawing tablets you can get. And if this is your first tablet, I will generally steer anyone towards getting a pen tablet rather than the other kinds of drawing tablets. We'll talk more about that later. Pen displays are drawing tablets that have a screen, an embedded display panel. They go by many names, screen tablets, display tablets, sometimes people call them drawing monitors. And you have to remember this, even though they look a lot like an iPad, they do not work as standalone devices you have to connect pen displays to a computer. And pen displays have no wireless options. These pen displays always have at least one cable that goes from the pen display to the computer. And sometimes they require multiple cables or even special kinds of cables. The third kind of drawing tablet is pen computers. Pen computers are essentially full-blown computers that also incorporate EMR technology. Pen computers do not need to be connected to a computer. They work as standalone devices. Now that we have covered all three types of drawing tablets, let me say this up front. I do not recommend pen computers. Yes, there are many people who are extremely happy with their pen computer, and I certainly understand the appeal. But still, I do not recommend them for these reasons. First, they are very, very expensive, much more expensive than your typical laptop. And for the same money you would spend on a good pen computer, you can get an amazing laptop or PC with a fantastic pen display. Second, like many laptops, a pen computer has very limited and sometimes no upgrade options. So if you want more memory or storage in the future, 
that may be a real problem. Third, pen computers are very challenging to get serviced. Drawing tablet brands really don't have a lot of retail presence, so it is not like you can just walk into a store somewhere and expect to get help. Most often, you will have to ship the pen computer back to the manufacturer at your own cost if it needs any kind of servicing. And fourth, if you do need to get it serviced, not only is shipping the tablet very expensive, the cost of getting it serviced can be a significant portion of the original price of the pen computer. Instead of a pen computer, I suggest three alternatives. These devices are not technically speaking drawing tablets, and I say that because these alternatives are intended as general purpose computers, but coincidentally, they all have a really nice digital pen experience which is great for drawing. The first alternative is the Apple iPad. When people tell me what they are looking for in a drawing tablet or a pen computer, they say things like, I'm looking for a great screen with good colors that's bright and has great contrast and high resolution. They also want a device that's not too big so that it is easy to carry around with them and draw when the inspiration hits them and have great battery life and have many great drawing applications. And they want the pen experience to be really nice with pressure and very little lag. And when they tell me all those things, I feel like they are describing an iPad. So instead of a pen computer, I recommend you consider an Apple iPad and specifically an iPad that works with the second generation of the Apple Pencil. If you are interested in choosing an Apple iPad, I want to make sure that you understand there are multiple versions of the Apple Pencil. For creative purposes, you will want to get the Apple Pencil version that supports tilt, pressure, and hover. And you can only get that combination of features currently with the second generation of the Apple Pencil. An important note about hover, remember, hover is currently only supported with specific iPad models. So please verify you're buying the right combination of iPad and Apple Pencil. The Samsung Galaxy Tab series of tablets uses the Samsung S Pen, and overall this series has some really nice drawing experience. And there are many options here at different price points. At the very lowest end, the Samsung Galaxy Tab S6 Lite, specifically the 2022 edition, it's about $240 and it works great as a beginner tablet. I think with this model, you have to buy the S Pen separately, so factor that into the cost. The Samsung Galaxy Tab 9 FE is just a little bit larger than the S6 Lite, but at $400 to $500, it's much more powerful and more responsive, and again, it has that great drawing experience. If you want a really big screen, you can try the Samsung Galaxy Tab S9 Ultra or even the S8 Ultra. These are about $1,000 and above. I have the Samsung Galaxy Tab S8 Ultra and you know, honestly, it's just a little too big for me, but it is a fantastic tablet with a great screen and it has a great drawing experience. And finally, if you're looking for more of a traditional laptop experience, something for example that runs Microsoft Windows, consider the Microsoft Surface Pro series. Specifically, look for the Microsoft Surface Pro 8 or the Surface Pro 9 or above. Because starting with Surface Pro 8, Microsoft finally improved how the Surface Pen works for drawing. It's still not as good as an EMR pen, but it is a huge improvement over previous versions from the Surface series. With pen computers out of the way, let's talk about how we might choose between a pen tablet and a pen display. First, let me say, look, I know pen displays look really fancy and cool, and certainly they are more expensive. But all those things do not mean that they are better for you. Many people try pen displays and switch right back to using a pen tablet. This happened to me. Many years ago, I bought a Wacom Cintiq, and I thought it was going to be the best thing ever and really unlock my artistic potential. And within just a few moments of using it, I realized it was not going to work for me in terms of how large it was, how heavy it was, how I had to sit in a specific way to draw with it, how much pointer lag I saw. I stopped using that tablet within 48 hours and I went back to my Wacom pen tablets. But that was my experience. Other people have had similar experiences. Some have very different experiences. But let's talk now about the factors that go into pen tablet versus pen display. First, let's generally talk about where pen tablets seem to do pretty good. 
First pen tablets are very inexpensive. They cost much less than a pen display. Pen tablets are just much simpler devices. Remember, they are just a plastic shell around the EMR sensor. This means they have fewer components, so there are fewer things that can go wrong. And in general, you'll find that they are just much more reliable and they last longer. And let's suppose you dropped your pen tablet on the floor from your desk. Most likely nothing bad will happen at all. Pen tablets do not have sensitive moving parts. But if you drop your pen display to the floor, you are certainly gonna break something. The cabling situation, how a tablet connects to the computer, is also much easier to deal with in the case of pen tablets. At worst, with a pen tablet, you'll have one USB-C cable that connects to your computer. And of course, some pen tablets support wireless connectivity via Bluetooth. But for pen displays, when they connect to a computer, it can be simple, but often it really is kind of complex because there are so many different options and things that go into it. Sometimes a single USB-C cable will work, but there are special requirements there to make it work. Not all computers support it, and not all cables support it. Sometimes you'll have to use two cables, sometimes three cables. And sometimes, with pen displays, you have to use a special proprietary cable. I mention these connection problems because so often I see someone purchase a pen display and they open up the box and it's only then that they realize they cannot connect it to their computer because they don't have the ports they need or they don't have enough of the right kinds of ports or there's some other limitation they did not consider. So if you're going to go with a pen display, just know it can get really complicated when you're trying to connect to your computer. So do your research on the connectivity before you make a purchase. Pen displays also do not have any wireless options. There will always be at least one cable connecting the pen display to your computer. In terms of portability, pen tablets really win. They're thinner, they're lighter, they consume less power, so they don't drain your laptop's battery, and they're just more rugged in general. Pen displays, on the other hand, they're thicker, they're heavier, their display will draw much more power from your laptop and eat into the battery life quite a bit. Posture also plays a huge part in selecting a pen tablet versus a pen display. With the pen tablet, you're sitting upright and you're looking straight ahead at your monitor, which is great for your posture. But with a pen display, you tend to be leaning over quite a bit. And so the effect of that is, for a lot of people, it will place some strain on your lower back. So if you have back problems, a pen display may not be the right choice for you. And even if you don't have back problems, you'll want to be more aware that you're taking breaks and not hunched over all the time. Now I've said a lot of great things about pen tablets. Now let's hear where pen displays really shine. With the pen tablet, there's a disconnect with your hand holding the pen and your eyes. You're drawing on the tablet with your hand, but you're looking up at your monitor and that's where you see what you're drawing. I would say 90% of people can handle this disconnect almost immediately when they start using a pen tablet. Another 5% of people, they just find this disconnect really weird, but within a few days or weeks, as they keep on using the tablet, that weird feeling goes away and it just works for them. And then there are an additional 5% of people who absolutely, no matter how much time they spend with a pen tablet, will never adjust to that disconnect it will just never feel right for them. And for those people, the pen display is really the better choice and the only choice because a pen display does not have that disconnect. You're drawing with your hand exactly where you see the drawing happening. So the drawing feeling is much more natural, much more like using a pen and paper. And it's obvious how to move the pen to get the effect you want. Many people, including myself, feel that when using a pen display, we're getting the strokes right the first time. With the pen tablet, lots of people feel you make a stroke and then you often have to undo it because the stroke did not go exactly where you wanted it to go. So I've heard people say they press undo with a pen tablet twice as much as they do when they're using a pen display. And I agree with that assessment. And when I want to get something drawn fast, I actually will always switch from my pen tablet to one of my pen displays. I think it makes me much faster, more than twice as fast to use a pen display. But again, for someone who's getting their very first tablet, I generally recommend getting a pen tablet unless you are very sure 
that what you need is a pen display. With a name like drawing tablet, people are going to be doing things that are like drawing. For example, sketching, painting, or illustration, which are all really creative tasks. And even if you're not doing creative things, you might be whiteboarding in an online meeting like a Zoom call, which is essentially another kind of drawing. And drawing tablets are really great for all of these purposes. There are scenarios where people use drawing tablets and they're not using them in a traditional creative or artistic sense. For example, some people are drawing, but it is in the context of making educational videos because they're drawing a lot of diagrams. For example, those videos that are put up by the Khan Academy, drawing tablets work really well for this case. Saul Khan, by the way, uses a Wacom Intuos Pro Medium tablet to make his videos. Sometimes people are interested in drawing tablets because they might be an ergonomic replacement for a mouse. Some people find that using a drawing tablet pen really feels much better for them and it places much less strain on the wrist. I myself used a drawing tablet for over 10 years without any mouse at all. And overall, I was able to do everything successfully, except for me, gaming was impossible. But I have to tell you, some people have the exact opposite reaction. They find that using a drawing tablet pen actually puts more strain on their wrist than the mouse. So people can have vastly different experiences in terms of ergonomics and protecting their wrist. Keep that in mind before you commit to buying a drawing tablet for this reason. There are two scenarios I want to pay special attention to. The first is gaming, specifically those of you who are wanting to get a drawing tablet to play the game called Osu. If you want to play Osu, honestly, just ignore all my recommendations. You will have much more demanding requirements on a drawing tablet than we who are just doing creative tasks have. And so for Osu, you should consult the tablet buying guide that tablet expert Cube created. That guide is targeted for people who play Osu. Cube does an incredible job researching these tablets and this guide he created for you will identify the best tablets for Osu for different budget ranges. The second scenario I want to draw your attention to is taking notes. I see this question a lot from students who are going to university. They want to take their drawing tablets with them so that they can take notes during lectures. So again, you have to consider that there are three kinds of drawing tablets. Pen tablets have that disconnect between what your hand is doing and what your eyes are seeing. And that disconnect does not work well for taking notes. Pen displays do work much more naturally for taking notes. However, there are some complications there. I mentioned already the cabling situation. And in this context, if they're attached to a laptop, they're going to drain the laptop battery. And because pen displays have more noticeable pointer lag, I feel like it makes it very difficult to take notes, especially if you're writing fast. I have tried it several times and it just does not work for me at all. So for taking notes, my suggestion is to not go with the pen computer, but again, choose one of the alternatives that I mentioned, which is an Apple iPad or a Samsung Galaxy Tab device or a Microsoft Surface Pro. We've covered a lot of ground in this first video. And what I have planned for the next video is I'm going to focus on the drawing tablet brands because there's so many of them and picking the right one is going to have a huge impact on your satisfaction with your tablet. This is going to be a very interesting discussion. How I'm going to approach this is I'm going to develop a tiering system so that we can bucket the brands into tier one, tier two, tier three, tier four. And then that will help us understand where to focus your attention. I'm sure some of you have lots of questions and suggestions for other topics. Please leave a comment and I'll try to address those in future videos. Thank you for your time and I hope you enjoyed this video.